Hey, what's up devs? Kotlin continues to grow in popularity and there's never been a better time to start learning the language. In this video, we'll take a look at a variety of ways that you can start learning and using Kotlin today. As Kotlin's popularity has increased, so have the tools and documentation supporting it. That's great for us as developers because it means starting to use the language is easier than you might think. So let's take a look at a few ways that you can start using Kotlin today. First up, we want to take a look at the Kotlin cones. Now what are cones? That's a good question. Cones can be thought of as practice exercises to help you learn the language so they're essentially a practice set to just help you explore what the language can do for you. This is actually how I started to learn Kotlin several years ago. And I think that it's really valuable and it's very easy to dive in and get started. So let's take a look at how you can do that. We can check out the cones section on the kotlinlang.org tutorial site. We can see the official definition as a series of exercises designed to get you familiar with the Kotlin syntax. It points out three different ways to get started with the cones, both online, within Android Studio or IntelliJ, and by downloading the GitHub repo. If you select cones online, we'll be taken into this online environment where you can test out all the different types of Kotlin syntax, functions, and language features. You can edit the code right inside the browser. You can then hit check to validate the code and ensure that it passes the provided tests. And through this process, you can really start to learn what the language can do for you. You see that there are a number of different practice problems on a variety of topics. There are even problems related to the book Kotlin in Action. So this is a great way to learn and to combine different types of learning. The second method to try the cones is an interactive learning plugin available for IntelliJ IDEs. You can open IntelliJ or Android Studio, navigate to Preferences, Plugins, Install a Plugin, search for EduTools, and click Install. IDE reboots will be presented with the starter prompt to choose your learning path. If we select Learner and click Start, we can then go to Browse Courses, and you'll then see Kotlin Cones as a selected option, which will then join. Once that loads, we'll see an interface very similar to what we saw in the online version. If we take a look at the project panel on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see exercises just like what we had in the online version. And just like the online version, we can edit the code, validate it, and ensure that it passes the tests. And finally, the third way to try the Kotlin cones is by downloading the repo from GitHub. Once the IDE opens, select Open and navigate to the repo location and hit Open. Once the project opens, we can navigate to the source and test directories to see what code is available to us. And again, we'll notice that it's broken down into the same sections as from the previous two examples of the Kotlin codes. If we open up the test, we can see what is going to be validated for us, which is the same as what we've been validating against in the other examples. And then we can look at the code that we need to modify to run the test and validate that we've learned the concept correctly. In this case, it means replacing the to-do with the string OK. Once we've modified the string and updated the return type, we can then navigate back to our test and validate that the test is correctly passed by the new code.
And that's the Kotlin cones. You can try online, use the EduTools plugin, or download the GitHub repo. Maybe cones aren't your thing. Maybe you'd rather be working in the IDE. Well, IntelliJ has you covered in multiple ways as well. It's very easy to create a new Java and Kotlin project within IntelliJ. In this case, we'll create one called Hello Kotlin and hit finish. Folder. Open up the source directory. Right click and select new Kotlin file or class. In this case, we'll create a new Kotlin file named app.kt and then we'll write a function named name and we'll have it print out hello Kotlin. Once we select run, we can see the output in the terminal and that's it. Another quick way to start using Kotlin is to use the REPL tool found within IntelliJ and Android Studio. Navigate to Tools, Kotlin, and Kotlin REPL. This will then bring up an interactive panel at the bottom of your screen to quickly write out and validate simple blocks of Kotlin code. So in this case, we'll write a hello world function Then we'll jump down to the next line, invoke that function, and then we'll execute this code, and we should see Hello World printed out to the console. Now Hello World is quite simple, but you can use it to start exploring more interesting features of the language as well. In this case, we can write out some Kotlin code that allow us to experiment with default argument values. We can define our function. Once that function is defined, we can use it in further expressions below. In this case, we'll define a name value and we can then invoke our say hello function multiple times passing in different numbers of parameters. So in one case we'll pass both parameters and in another we'll only pass one and specify the default. Once we hit execute we can see the output of both of these functions. We can also run the REPL tool from the command line. Here we'll use brew to make sure that Kotlin is installed and usable from the command line on my machine. We start with brew update. Once that finishes, we can type brew install Kotlin. Once that's finished updating, we'll be able to use the REPL tool from the command line. To start the REPL tool, type Kotlin C JVM at the command line. This will then start a familiar window to what we saw in the IDE tool. From here, we can start to type expressions and evaluate them within the window. Not only can we use the REPL tool from the command line, but we can actually build our entire project from the command line as well. We'll start by writing our hello.kt. This will be a simple file with a single main function that prints out hello world. We can compile it using Kotlin C. We'll pass in the file name. We'll include the runtime and then dash D and the name of the jar that we want to output. We can then run our program 
by calling java-jar and passing in hello jar and we should see our output. If you're an Android developer, you might want to know how to get started within Android Studio itself, where you'll end up writing most of your code. Thankfully, Android Studio makes it really easy for us to start using Kotlin. We'll open up an existing project. We'll then convert the activity into a Kotlin class by calling convert Java file to Kotlin. This will automate the process for us. And once we're done, we'll have a shiny new activity written entirely in Kotlin. Double clicking on our source directory and selecting new, we can jump to Kotlin file or class to create a new Kotlin file, interface, object, etc. We'll create a new file named hello.kt and in it we can create our say hello function that we've seen in other examples previously. We can also create new Kotlin activities by selecting the templates and choosing Kotlin as our source language and then clicking finish. The generated code will then be completely in Kotlin. So that's it. We've taken a look at a handful of ways that you can start using Kotlin today. Now it doesn't require building a big code base, doesn't even require an IDE. You could try it out in the web browser, or a sample project, or the cones, or convert an existing class. Now this could be a great way for you to start becoming familiar with the language without really committing to working with it in your primary code base. If you haven't already been playing with the language, hopefully this will encourage you to do so. You might start to find that you really like it, and if you haven't already been using Kotlin in production, maybe that'll be the jumping off point for you. So what's your favorite way to start using Kotlin? Comment down below. I'd love to hear what other people use to become familiar with the language. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.